Hi team, I'm here to do a video today about um, chapter 4b, exercise 4b, um, and that ex exercise is about equivalent fractions and simplified fractions together in the one exercise. I'm actually going to do um, two videos on this topic to split them up a little bit. So this first one is about equivalent fractions only, but they are connected. Okay, so let's talk about what those words mean. Equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same place on the number line. If we were to put them in the correct order, they would represent the same size. Okay, so for example, we've got one half and two quarters. The numbers are different to each other, but it means the same value. Okay, so half and two quarters. Um, same as if you had half a pizza, you would be eating four out of eight slices, if that was the case. Okay, equivalent fractions are produced by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So to find an equivalent fraction to another equivalent fraction, you would increase the, both the top and the bottom by multiplying. Okay, and this number can be any whole number that's greater than one. So any number you can choose to multiply it by. I'll do some examples of this in a minute. Equivalent fractions can also be produced by dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number, if you can. Okay, so that's not as easy to do because sometimes a number won't divide completely into another, in which case you can't use that number. I thought it would be useful before I do some examples to just talk about um, a really handy resource like a fraction wall. So here it shows um, the different equivalents. So I'll show you like a half as an example. So a half is represented by this line that I'm drawing down here. So that would include um, half and also two quarters. Two quarters, one quarter or two quarters. Okay. Um, here we've got one six, two six, three six. Has, has the same value. Uh, we've got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, okay, etc. Okay. So let's do some sample questions. So these are really typical questions that you might be asked to do in your textbook or in an exam. So the first one says write three equivalent fractions to one half. So like I said before, you can um, always multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number to find an equivalent fraction. That's a really good choice for this question. Now, there are many, many possible correct answers here. So I could choose to multiply the numerator and the denominator by two. Okay, now it has asked me to find three, so I'm gonna just find the first one to begin with. So I've got one half as my first fraction. If I multiply the top and the bottom by two, I get two times one, two, two times three, four. So two quarters or two fourths is an equivalent fraction to a half. I could um, times the denominator, numerator and the denominator by four. And that would give me four over eight. So that is an equivalent fraction. Or I could times it by 50. The key is that it has to be the same, the top and the bottom. So that would give me 50 over 100, and that would be an equivalent fraction. Okay. Now, the next one that I've got here um, is a similar question. I might write three equivalent fractions to 8 over 20. I could, again, multiply 8 over 20 by a set of numbers like I did just previously. But for this example, I can divide them as well. So I thought I'd do a couple of examples like that. So if I had 8 over 20, I'd be thinking what number divides into 8 and also into 20. So 2 is an example of that. So that would give me 4 over 10. That's an equivalent fraction to 8 over 20. Okay, I could divide 8 over 20 by 4 because I know 4 goes into 8 and also into 20. So that would give me 2 over 5. That would be an equivalent fraction. Now, if I tried to divide 8 over 20 by 3, I couldn't do that without any remainders. So 8 divided by 3 would give me not a whole number. So I can't do it that way. 
So I would then, for this example, multiply to get my third equivalent fraction. So a very easy way to do that is to double that number. And that's my last equivalent fraction. There's loads of different other possibilities though as well. Okay, another style of question is where you're given a numerator and or a denominator and you're asked to fill in the blanks. So this one says, complete the missing numbers to show equivalent fractions. So for these questions, unlike the ones above, there's really only one correct answer because they've given you part of the fraction already. Okay, so here I've got one third is my first fraction here and an equivalent fraction has the denominator of six already written. So I need to ask myself, what have they done to the three to make it to a six, divided or multiplied? And here you can see they've times it by two. So that means I've got to do the same to the top. And that would give me an answer of two six. Okay. Now, with these questions, I always um, don't build on the fractions and, um, and keep going. Um, I would always go back to the start, my beginning fraction. So one times something's give me four, four, then I need to do the same to the bottom in this case because I've already got my numerator. So three times four is 12. Next fraction along, I've got the denominator of 30. So that means I have times by 10. So that makes that one really easy, 10 over 30. The next one here, I've got three and then 60. So I've times by 20. Oops. And then that's a terrible two, sorry. And now um, at the end, I've got uh, 100 as my numerator. So I've times one by 100 to get there. Three by the same um, multiplication is 300. That's not gonna fit in that tiny box. But there we go, 100 over 300. Okay.